The most challenging and most rewarding part of my 2004 Mustang V6 autocross build is the IRS swap. When it was introduced, the 99-04 Cobra independent rear suspension was considered a failure. It was, in all honesty, an afterthought plagued by design compromises and the reluctance of the Mustang muscle car community to embrace change. But after years of people pulling their IRSs out, autocrossers have begun to swap them in because the aftermarket has figured out how to solve the factory-installed flaws in the IRS setup. The hard parts of the IRS aren't the problem. It's all the soft stuff in between. From the factory, the subframe, differential, and control arm bushings are all inadequate for performance driving, and the sway bar end links don't allow the sway bar to effectively do its job. You end up with wheel hop and a car that reaches its handling limit much sooner than it should. If you plan on autocrossing an IRS swapped car, it's a good idea to eliminate the weak links before you put the IRS in your car. It's not hard to take the IRS back out, but it does take a lot of time. Because the IRS was designed to bolt into a chassis that was never intended to have one, the IRS subframe mounts to the areas on the chassis used for the lower control arms and quad shocks on straight axle cars. The factory rubber bushings allow for play in the subframe. I'm using these ultra-high molecular weight bushings from Full Tilt Boogie Racing. They essentially eliminate any flex between the subframe and chassis, making it as close to a rigid mount as possible. There's also a lot of slop in the factory differential bushings. Full Tilt Boogie Racing offers aluminum front diff bushings and a Delrin and aluminum rear diff mount that lowers the differential to provide a better pinion angle. You don't want polyurethane bushings in either of these locations. The goal is to eliminate any wheel hop when you launch the car or get hard on the throttle. A common failure point is the stock differential cover. They can actually crack under hard launches. I went with this Ford Racing cover modified by Full Tilt Boogie Racing to accept their lowering rear diff mount. The people at Full Tilt Boogie Racing will be really upset with me about this, but I went with polyurethane bushings in the upper and lower control arms. This kit from Prothane is better than stock, but it isn't nearly as good as Full Tilt's Delrin kit. I went with Poly for two reasons. It saved a lot of money, and the V6 only has 220 horsepower. It can barely break the tires loose when it launches. Wheel hop is not a major problem for my car, so I chose to address the more important issues with the subframe and diff bushings. I've purchased three IRSs over the last few years, Every single one has had bad factory sway bar end links. They just don't last. Full Tilt Boogie Racing makes these adjustable end links that remove the preload that biases the bar to one side of the car, creating uneven handling. Getting the sway bar neutral lets it do its job better. Just upgrading the bushings and end links will make a huge difference in how your IRS handles. I get my IRS assemblies from various Mustang salvage yards. Some arrive in better condition than others. The rear tow links on this unit had seen better days, so I went with Full Tilt Boogie Racing's heavy duty version. They are much stronger than the stock pieces, are easier to adjust, and allow you to bump steer the car. I chose to Kiko D-Spec adjustable rear shocks. Just like the front suspension, adjustability and predictability are key here. The D-Specs have a wide range of adjustment that lets you dial in rear grip and they adjust easily from the top. Rear grip is affected by rear camber. Full Tilt Boogie Racing's IRS camber bolts have a larger eccentric than the stock parts, letting you dial in more or less camber. They allow me to get to the magic number of negative two degrees of camber in the rear. Having negative two degrees front and rear is a grip alignment. It creates less rotation, which keeps the car planted. Because I don't have enough power to spin the tires, I can effectively get every bit of power to the ground everywhere on course with this camber setup. Tying everything together is iBox 29mm rear sway bar. It's a little larger than stock, comes with poly bushings, and it's adjustable. The two settings allow me to add in a little throttle-induced oversteer if I want it. On an underpowered V6, the ability to stiffen up the rear sway bar to induce oversteer is really important. I don't have the torque to pull out of slow elements. I have to enter everything faster and use momentum. Sometimes, getting the rear end to step out a little to help the car rotate is better than using the brakes and taking the turn slower. 
I went with Eibach Pro Kit Springs for the 99 and 01 Cobras. You have to buy the complete kit, but the fronts are specific to V8 cars. The 99 and 01 Cobras were lighter than the Terminator Cobras, so these springs are ideal for a V6 IRS swap. The springs are a 650 to 821 pound per inch progressive rate. They reduce body roll and help keep the rear end stable in sweepers and slaloms. They lower the car about 1.4 inches. Using Maximum Motorsports poly rear spring isolators will raise the car a quarter of an inch. So overall, you'll lower the car just over an inch. Steeda makes these IRS bracket braces that weld to the factory mounts and tie into the body of the car. They're an inexpensive way to add strength to the brackets, which are under more stress with the UHMW bushings in place. I also added a set of Wild Rides Battle Box Torque Box reinforcements. These are specifically designed to fit the 94-04 Mustangs without having to cut the edges of the torque box opening. An IRS swap is a very involved mod. While the IRS was designed to fit into the 99-04 Mustang chassis, the simple fact that this car wasn't born with an IRS made the install more difficult. Plan on spending several days doing the swap, and you will need a four-wheel alignment when you're done. The more organized you are, the better off you'll be, and you will absolutely need a good friend to help. This install is equal parts finesse and brute force, and knowing which is appropriate at what time is paramount. You have to remove everything associated with the straight axle. The axle assembly, upper and lower control arms, the rear brakes, and don't forget to remove the pinion snubber. And if you don't have ABS and traction control, you will have to get custom rear brake lines made. An IRS swap is definitely worth the time but the devil is in the details. I'll provide more details about the parts I used, some useful tips, and reviews of the IRS mods in the final video in this series.